Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's talk about Young Justice. This is all spawned from, I wanted to do the Bendis Young Justice book. Because mm -hmm. I kind of have this 2020 policy back when the world didn't catch fire. And I was like, hey, we're going to do like newer books and getting some new readers and some new viewers. And But in this particular case, I thought it would be disingenuous to do Bendis' Young Justice because not even Bendis knows what happened and what didn't happen. And he is pretending that his lack of understanding of continuity is in some way a plot point. Mm. And I thought it would be it would be not it would be unfair for me to introduce the young justice through the lens of a person who barely <laughs> understands who they are. Okay. Without actually giving you who Young Justice really is. So I'm giving you this debut of Young Justice, which is to say modern Teen Titans. Okay. That's what Young Justice is. Okay. It's just that they came up with a hip new term for them. Right. Because the Teen and Titans... And they call themselves that. That's what they call themselves that. Young Justice. Yeah, I thought that was like a moniker that the media had called them. Right. And they were like, no. But like, no. They're like, yeah, let's go. It's Young Justice. I'm like, don't say that out loud. <laughs> like, that's a good title for your book. But I wouldn't like brand it. I wouldn't get matching tattoos. Right. You're gonna be yeah. young forever. Yeah, exactly! Hey, remember when we were on Young Justice? <laughs> YJ for- Oh! <laughs> I just pooped myself. Young Justice forever. Like, no. But anyway, the idea was that the Teen Titans had been advanced to the point of not being teens anymore. Oh, so they changed their name to the Titans. And so there was an opening for Teen Titans, so they called themselves Young Justice. <laughs> well, we're not gonna take the Teen Titans title. No. We yeah. don't have Cyborg and Raven and Starfire. Who cares and about that? Beast Boy. Like, That's my whole point. Well, the, the Teen Titans were originally formed because they were just the sidekicks. Yeah. And that's essentially what we have here with Young Justice, is the formation of this team which is made up of a trinity of legacy characters who were implied to be the next generation of the hero that they're modeled after. Mm. Robin, Superboy, and Impulse, who are also, of course, perfectly representative examples of 90s original creations. So they uh, so they debuted... So they debuted in JLA. In another book. Yeah, but I mean, like, at least in appropriate... They gotta go one. somewhere, I guess. Yeah, well, they gotta come from somewhere. Well, you're not gonna read somewhere. them just yeah. in their own book to start off with. Who cares? Yeah, we gotta trick JLA readers into, like, being interested in them. Yeah, well, thankfully, they didn't create anybody new right. in these pages. Right. So it was all it, characters that all had... If you were following along, you knew who these people were. They all had their own titles, too. Mm. Robin, Superboy... Impulse, all the things. Who is Impulse? I don't know who okay. Impulse is. Am I the asshole? I don't know who Impulse. <laughs> Bart Allen is Barry Allen's grandson from the future, who has come back in time. Barry Allen has been dead since Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm. Wally West is the de facto Flash, and there's only a few other Flash characters to contend with, not including villains. You also have Jay Garrick and Max Mercury. So really the only one who's dead is Barry. So I gotta point this out. Mm. If you're a young kid who has superpowers and you travel back in time and you're stuck here, mm -hmm. isn't your main concern to get back to your time? Because shouldn't your family be really worried about you well, and you were worried about them? Theoretically speaking, when you go back to where you came from, it's like you never left. Except you'll be years older, apparently. <laughs> well, maybe if you don't stay that long. Yeah. How long has Impulse been here? Impulse was not created to be put back. <laughs> they created him so that he would supplant Kid Flash. I'm, I'm assuming that what normally happens when they do this, because this happens all the time, right? Like with X-Men, you had characters come oh, back yeah, in the future. The, I, I would assume that they do like a few months where the character is like worried about getting back. And then after a while, they just forget about it. Yeah. And then it never comes up well, again. Well, they just get comfortable with where they are. Yeah. And then they usually do one issue where they are really, really sad about it. And they go on an adventure, typically involving a fight. And at the end of it, they cathartically decide that they now live here. Right. And they can't have their heads stuck 
in that place. And then well, the writers don't have to worry about how that person would normally be heart sick and wanting to return. Absolutely. Well, I need to be here. This is this is where I need to stay to fight and this do is my rights destiny. and all right. that kind of crap. Yeah. I'm fulfilling something. Yeah. Purpose. Usually it's no, it's it's usually from what I can tell, it's normally a human response where they're like I'm growing as a person by letting go of my future life. Mm. It's like, not just it's, like, oh, I got a future letter from my parents. They sent it back in time. And they said, it's cool. We don't we, miss you. We got a puppy. We replaced you. Yeah. We had a daughter. <laughs> She's better in every way. Yep. No. <laughs> but Impulse was essentially just like, a new hero for the 90s from the 21st century. That was the idea. And he's fun. Is he a duck dodger? <laughs> That's 24th and a half. Impulse, I, for my money, I like Impulse uh, because he actually goes through character progression. Okay. Like, when he shows up, he is impetuous and impulsive, as the name would suggest. Mm. Uh, he has no patience, and he is a jackass. Like He's, he's just, a Flash. Yeah. But, yeah, but a lot of the Flashes have integrity, and <laughs> they know well, better. Yeah, but they didn't always start off like that. Yeah, most of them did, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Jay, Wally, Barry, Max. I mean, Jay yeah. Garrick, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone back then was like, don't worry, yeah. I have to wake up in the morning and do my good deed for the day, and I mean, then I can have breakfast. Wally was Kid Flash, so he was younger than the others, but he mm. wasn't in any way like Impulse. Mm. Impulse was a teenager made in the 90s by a man in his 40s. So he was an asshole. Well, so he was... Young and impetuous and fat. It, it, you He's know, a punk he, kid. He was, yeah, kind of. Superboy was more of a punk than Impulse when mm -hmm. he was first created, as you know. Superboy was more of like a, you know, he he sexually assaulted women <laughs> in the name of fun. Oh, oh yeah. No, he was confident. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but no, he he kissed girls and he flew around and he insulted people casually. You know that kind yeah, of. Yeah, he acted like he was a big shot. Yes. Well, why wouldn't anyone want to make out with me? Look at me, I'm Superman. Right. Now. Yeah, look Don't at my call sweet me leather boy. jacket. Damn right. At this point, he's already moved on from man. Well, yes, yeah, Superman boy. came back. <laughs> Superman came back, turned blue, cut his hair, came back. Like, so no. It's like I don't think I'm allowed to call myself Superman anymore. I am straight up not. Oh no, Superman. When he had a mullet, he and Superboy had a conversation about it. <laughs> he like he imme he comes back to life, you and he's stop. like literally like it's over. He comes back to life. <laughs> Bury it. <laughs> They, they defeat Mongol and Cyborg Superman. The reign of the Superman is over. Superman is back and he has a mullet. And like, next issue, he's like, stop. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> okay, of business. damage control. <laughs> Brand management. I gotta go to Steel's house. I gotta tell him to get rid of the S. I gotta go to Superboy's house, kick him in the ass. I gotta go to that putty lady. There's a long time coming, Matrix. You are not my cousin. <laughs> and it is time you found a new form. Anyway. So, uh, but Superboy gets to keep the, keep the S. He does. Yeah. He does. And in fact, <laughs> Superboy gets... Well, he's the, a clone or something, right? Yeah, but not of him. Oh, no? No. Oh, that was a lie? Yeah. Or something? No. No, you can't clone Superman. What they wound up doing was they... they <laughs> it's worse than anything. They found out that there was like a, an invisible aura around Superman that is responsible for most of his powers, like invulnerability and flight and stuff. So they figured out how to like approximate the aura on like the clone of, a, of another person and like some of Lex Luthor's DNA and like so they, they made their own Superman project Project Cadmus that is yeah. uh, that was loyal to them and would carry out their orders and just the specific orders of the director of Cadmus and then you know they were accelerating him uh, via technology in age maturity and body and then you know something interrupted the, pl the process right. and he was a teenager and he was freed so not even remotely a clone. N no. Well, he's a clone, but not a Superman. But not a super he's yeah. a Lex clone. Yeah, more or it's, less. It's a partial clone of the aura. Uh, yeah. Well, and, well they and, use the well, aura. They use the, well, let me guess. They studied the aura yeah. with a ray or something. Sure. And then they matched it. Yeah. And, and, and manufactured, well, manufactured it. Well, they manufactured some on version of it. Yeah. And, and in fact, the aura that they created was different obviously yeah, sure. it's imperfect and it yeah. was then translated into what superboy called tactile telekinesis mm. that's the idea is that superman doesn't fly through magic it's through telekinesis right and it's like no just don't explain it nobody asked 
how does Superman fly? Shut I the asked. fuck up is the I, answer I asked to that. Many yeah, times. but like, it doesn't matter how he flies. The fact that is, he does. Yeah. We but, all got the answer for that. Well, the, yeah. He shoots stuff out of his no, butt. No, we thought yeah. about it because he, he didn't need to fly. He just jumped really high. When he, when he first started, he's, yeah. he has it was just like The, the much explanation longer. was that the gravity on his planet was, was higher, higher, and so he could jump really yes. high. And yes. that was an explanation. But then once he's flying, it's like, well... Then you throw the explanation yeah, Well, that explanation window. doesn't work, and no. now there is none. Right. He just evolved well, from Well, except there is really one, and they say it's telekinetic. Well, that's so stupid. I agree. Yeah, well, that's... And that's the thing is that any answer would be ultimately unsatisfying. Yeah. Like, right. don't explain it. Yeah. And usually they don't. Superman normally says things like, it's complicated. <laughs> Which is just shorthand for I don't know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Superboy eventually was cornered by Superman, and Superman wanted to, like... Project Cadmus gets taken over by, like, another group, and Superman doesn't trust that group either, but Superboy works with them now, and so he's like, I want you to be, like, my double agent in Cadmus and like report back to me and Superboy's like that seems kind of Batman and <laughs> Superman's like I'll take that personally but uh, but it works for him why can't it work for me because you're Superman <laughs> you don't wear a mask it's all about being on the front street but Superman takes Superboy to the Fortress of Solitude back when it was in the Antarctic and essentially gives Superboy a crash course in Kryptonian genealogy and history and even though he's not Kryptonian, that's right. But well, he's like, he, you're wearing the crest. He needs to and, uh, know about the Kryptonian you're representing stuff. You're representing my me. culture. You have yes. my aura. Yeah. <laughs> you have a, you, you have, have approximation. A, you have an aura level. that was that was similar a to mine. version created by copying mine less than perfectly. Yep. And you wear my T-shirt. Ergo, you are now a member of the House of L. And that's essentially what he does. He he actually okay. he adopts him because they retcon the story that like Con L was a rogue agent that in the earlier histories of like the House of L and Kryptonian history uh, aided the L family in ironically enough a cloning war mm -hmm. and as a thank you the L family gave him a name and brought him into the House of L and he got to create his own house of L that ran parallel to Jor's House of L and so Superman in deference to his father's gesture, or his family's gesture, adopts Connor Kent, or what his name would be later, into Con L. He'd be like, your name, Kryptonian-wise, will be Con L. Yeah. Which... I give you a Kryptonian name. Yes. You're welcome. He really I appreciates it because Superboy has no name. Right, right, right. So... Yeah. What are you talking about? He's batch nice. 347. Right. Yes. <laughs> He's Superboy. Yeah. Or the Metropolis kid, but like nobody but he doesn't wants have to, parents. Right, exactly. So Superman's like you're like, t you're you're formally adopted into the House of L. Okay. And uh, nice. which really like makes him feel welcome. I'm amazed Batman doesn't go. He doesn't have parents. Make him a Robin. Yeah. Well, we we've made that joke a few times. <laughs> but I like the idea that Superman has his own like adopted son. That like in the post-crisis continuity, which was rich and fun, and I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, superfluous redundancies were done away with. <laughs> <laughs> and if you needed to have like Supergirl, we don't want to do no. Last son of Krypton. If if his dog and his cat and his cousin and his, well, then why isn't there a ch oh, there's a whole goddamn city? <laughs> you know he, he's not special. He's not the last of anything. Yeah, no. He's the last normal sized Krypton. He's the, he's the first one to land here. That's the only thing yeah. that's special about him. Why don't we just do away with a lot of that stuff? So, like, we want to do Supergirl, but we'll make it, like, fun and complicated. He's a, she's a putty monster who's looking like her as, like, a sign of respect. There's no Superboy, but, like, we'll make one. Right. And he's, he's not even Kryptonian, but Superman doesn't care about that. Right. And isn't that really nice? Yeah, and he's it's Kryptonian like, in spirit or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. like, Robins, they're all adopted until they're not. Yep. Like every Robin is adopted and, and, and that, you know, because family isn't about blood and biology. Yeah, no, but it is though. Oh, but no. <laughs> well, until the people who until read them is. had their own children <laughs> and went, oh, actually it's like really important. Like my kid was born and something snapped in my brain. And I realized that like, <laughs> I can't possibly consider a universe where I'm not a father and I wouldn't give everything for my biological offspring. Right. And I'm gonna translate that into my friggin' work. But like, it's not yeah. about you. 
or your kid. I know that's impossible to fathom, but I like Young Justice because it's essentially made up of a bunch of people who have no parents. Yeah. That's, you know? Yeah. But, but are also legacy characters nonetheless. Yeah. So, but, 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 Wait. Mostly. So who? In, and, so this is Superboy. This is old Superboy. This isn't. No, this Jonathan. Is, no, 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 no. Oh. This is not Jonathan. This is from 1998. Oh, I didn't know what I was looking at here. Yeah. Okay. I thought this was recent. Um, so I, I think the art will will thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Originally with the JLAs, it was just Robin, Superboy, and Impulse. The original formation of Young Justice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the JLA books, that's where you get them. Right. Yeah. But the, yeah, yeah, they debut. They, they debut as a Trinity in JLA. Okay. okay. Uh, and not even JLA, the regular book. In JLA, the original story, JLA, World Without Grownups. So, Do we have to get into this, or can we just jump into Young Justice? That's the same thing as this. What? It opens with this. Yeah, that is part of Young Justice. Like, yeah, we're they, talking they about... They designed it so that you need that to get this. You wouldn't buy it if it was called Young Justice. Right. But after you've read this, maybe you'll check out Young Justice. And in fact, the Young Justice line was created Despite the fact that this story, JLA World Without Grownups, was written by Todd DeZago, with art by Mike McCone and Humberto Ramos, Peter David was kind of the progenitor of the Young Justice line. And okay. Peter David, solid storyteller, long history, long career, great accolades and awards under his belt. He's a perfect guy to execute that series. Despite the fact that he was absolutely nowhere near a child when he was working on it. Oh, that's amazing. He was able to pull from that. Yeah, it's almost like he's creative. So the thing, the, the mandate, if you will, from editorial to David was, we need to get young readers. Mm. Create a book for young readers. And it doesn't matter how it sells. We're in it for the long haul. We're just going to have it printed. And we will grow the brand naturally over time. Wow. Yeah. I've, I, I can't That's believe crazy. a company like DC would ever have said that out loud, much less executed it for as long as they did. Of course, they did end up canceling it. Right. Just like they canceled everyone's titles, all these guys had books. Superboy, Impulse, Robin, all titles were canceled. All can be given. All can be taken <laughs> away. I'm just confused as to why you would need to do that. Well, you they have books for kids. They're called superhero comics. <laughs> Yes, I mean, in the you can be, of terms. You can be any age and enjoy superhero comics. You don't uh, have to make well, a book about young kids. Yeah, but at a certain so point, they wanted to read it. But that's superheroes why like Robin was, people and stuff. That's so why the, Robin was created to get young readers in. Yeah. In 1941. Yeah, but then he grew up and became Nightwing. Yeah. And we created a new well, one. But I'm saying that like they've been following that practice of kids won't read it if there isn't a kid avatar in the book. Right. For 70 years. Just because a superhero's in it doesn't mean it's necessarily marketed for children. It, but if we put a child in it, it's perfect. Yes. Or at least yeah. the conceit is not a child, a teenager. Right. Because it's the people closer. we're trying to get to read it are not teenagers. Right. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, we the, want them to look up to the teenager. Yeah, we want yeah. them to see, see where they can get their P's and Q's from. Yeah. And what's amazing is it worked. Young Justice did build an audience. And that audience fiercely followed this series. Wow. And it created modern DC fans today who love and miss and complain about these characters. It right. Why did they throw them away? Oh, I love it because it straight up worked. It like it worked. The directive was create a book and I don't care about the sales. Just put it out and we're gonna grassroots grow an audience of loyal DC readers, and then they did. And then they threw it all away with New 52, and then they tried to bring it back with Rebirth, and then they threw it all away again with Tom King, and they were like, I don't know. And so th there's, this, there's this influx of, of, of an audience that they created, this bedrock of people that they've just been crapping on. It's like, you, you, it's like, it's like planting a flower and then getting mad that it grew. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, I don't understand, but it's it's just amazing. And by the way, you know who they blamed for the cancellation of Young Justice? Dan DiDio. Dan DiDio said that the sales were bad. Oh yeah? And that it was too kid-like and jokey. But it's That's why you made it! <laughs> I know! It was, it's for kids, you jackass! It's, it, it's conceit is to be sold! I, 
to children. I can kind of see the problem though, because like you start with something that's marketed to children, that's aimed at children, that's meant to appeal to children, that tells stories that children will like. Sure. But they get attached to those characters. But the characters don't grow up. No. The book is still for children, but all the children who bonded with it, now they're adults. Yeah. So now they want stories maybe that are a little more complex, yeah, but a at little the same bit time, more grown up. The stories are complex but they want and grown their, up. Well, no, no, because Peter David was like, I will write it like superficially for kids, but like there's something. He did infuse actual Story mature elements. themes. Yeah into his child narrative. Even this, like JLA World Without Grown Ups, which I recognize is not written by Peter David, but is still the the marching orders for the mm-hmm. series. Like it, it's following ju- Young the Justice reads just as maturely as JLA was. Mm-hmm. Like Grant Morrison was doing JLA around the same time and it, it Young Justice and JLA are practically brothers in its like tone, maturity, and its like content. It's just the characters that are different. It's just they're that just, the, the characters are younger. are younger. That's yeah. literally it. Mm. And I love it because their their plan, whether with, with Young Justice, was that it was going to be a temporary series. Like we're going to keep it around mm. for as long as it sold. But when it didn't sell very much, we're going to keep it around still to to build that audience. But eventually, Young Justice will graduate. Right, and they just didn't. No, they did. They ended up actually. Where'd they go? They went to the Titans and the Outsiders. Oh, and people didn't like that, or not really? Yeah, they were like, "Well, why do they need to go anywhere?" Which <laughs> I argue is absolutely right. Right. Like, why, why do they need to graduate to anything? Young Justice doesn't mean anything. We've got to make room for new characters. Right. But they didn't make a new Young Justice book with new characters in it. I gave you a little refresher course yeah. of who Young Justice I, was. I literally but, have woo! never heard of Young Justice, or if I have, I didn't hear anything about the it. Only so this way, is all introduction yeah, for the, me. This that's is all. the thing. The only way you would have ever heard of it is because there was a cartoon also called uh, Young Justice. And it was also rife with controversy because the higher ups like didn't believe in it right. and cancel it prematurely yeah. despite its obvious greatness and everyone's fan love for it. Like there is a fierce loyal wow. fan base for that cartoon such that when DC Universe was spanned, they launched it on the platform of we're bringing back Young Justice. Mm. And everyone's like, yeah, Young yeah, Justice! You're bringing back a thing that's already been told. Well, they had, they, they, they did end it they new episodes. No, they made a new season. Oh, is this a Young Joker? Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Young no. Joker. Yeah. It's, Everybody's got a young version. So JLA World Without Grown Ups is very silly. <laughs> but... It's told with sincerity and maturity. Okay. And the idea is, we intro it by by bringing you up to speed about who this book's going to be about. And it's Robin, Superboy, and Impulse. Right. And, like, Robin fights a villain, and he and the villain gets the upper hand, so Batman steps in, he's like, go to the cave. And Superboy fights a villain, and he splatters them all over the place. It's just a big, stupid robot, but breaks uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then Luther shows up, and he's like, oh, where are you going? Aren't you going to clean up after yourself? And he goes, no. And the Superman shows up and he's like, yes. <laughs> and then Impulse is just a complete jackass who doesn't want to listen or wait for anything. And his mentor... Or go back to his time. He's not going back to his time. <laughs> uh, but his mentor, Max Mercury, who was a speedster in his own right, is trying. And what's funny is he's the oldest. Like, he's older than Jay Garrick. And he's uh-huh. like, and he's being like, hey, it's fun because Mark Wade was like really smart to introduce like the youngest Flash with the oldest Flash. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, I like it. Yeah. It's cute. But essentially, Max tries to instill in Bart the idea you need to slow down. You, you're That's, too fast like, in every respect. Yes. Yeah. Like you need to slow down, particularly in your like brain. Right. Like you d- stop for a second and just just take it in. Yeah. Um, also, you're grounded because like <laughs> you were supposed to leave and you did and you know. Right. You weren't supposed to use your super speed after t- after a certain hour. After yeah. Nine. No. Yeah. You, you didn't know, eat your vegetables. You didn't do your homework. Was the issue. Ah, of course. So meanwhile, uh, I don't need to do my homework. I'm a superhero. Right. Like, yes, but like you need to go to school. <laughs> uh, then there's this other kid named Matt who's 13 years old and he's having a birthday party and his dad isn't there and everyone's trying to cheer him up and have a good time and he's just being a 13 year old shit. Mm. <laughs> you know, like they're, he's got all these great like presents and friends and family and his mom and he's like, Dad's not here. Mm. And then Dad shows up. Oh. And he's an archaeologist and he. Ended his expedition early, or at least came back from it early, so that he could be there on time for his son's birthday. And he's like, well, you're late. 
I was gonna guess that's wow. what. It, yeah, we well, were here on time. Yeah, and then he's like, "Well, I got you this gift. Here you go." And he's like, "Oh, here I got you this oh, it's cursed old piece tombstone. Of crap. It's, it's it's oh, it's it's the old piece of trash you found on the, on the ground. Yeah, it's, a, it's an ancient Atlantean artifact. Oh, and he's like, I wanted to play Tendo sixty nine. Yeah, like. <laughs> I can't say the name of the of the product, but you know what it is because they draw a Nintendo 64 like four right. times in this book. Right. But they call it, they just call it a Playtendo. A Playtendo. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I get it, but like, come on. Right. I guess because PlayStation had come out around the same time. PlayStation, uh, Nintendo, but Xbox is like, we will have no part of this. I don't think Xbox don't think existed Xbox, yet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or well, GameCube. This was before I don't the... Know. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's pre, it is pre-GameCube. It's before the geometric in, shape. Boxes. Well, it was the that, Nintendo GameCube, so like a Nintendo uh, Play Tendo. Yeah, but the, but they're, they're 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 focusing on the N sixty four, so the, yeah. the cube wasn't invented yet. So <laughs> this kid is like he's got this like amazing Atlantean artifact, and he's like lame. This sucks. Party's over. Fart. Leave. Doesn't uh -huh. really fart, but he, he socially farts, and then he goes to his room, and he's like, this sucks, and. He looks into this like ancient Atlantean artifact, which no one would have let that man leave with. No. No, it's priceless. <laughs> yeah, if you're an archaeologist, you just pocket you just leave with items shit. and could, yeah. walk off. No. Yeah. Here, happy birthday. <laughs> that has to be back by tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. by I don't the way. think he's an archaeologist. I think he's a grave robber. That's right. He's looking at this thing and he sees a man trapped in it, and he feels like mesmerized and compelled to break it. So he smashes oh it, and this purple entity called Bedlam emerges. Bedlam? Yes. Nice. And Bedlam reveals that he is the offspring of one of the sons of Atlantean gods, and he was trapped and imprisoned in this thing. Essentially, it is a DC Universe version of a genie. Right. Wait, he's, is he gonna grant him wishes and shit? Essentially, like his master. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have freed me from the tube. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You've got Arrowette, who yeah. is supposed to be Green Arrow. Yeah. yeah who is not on the man. Justice League. He used to be. Used and normally to be. is. Yeah. But you got the Flash counterpart. Uh huh. Batman, Superman, Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman. Yeah. And Secret. And Secret. <laughs> well, I'm like. I can't tell if you're supposed to be you Green Lantern or maybe you're a Martian Manhunter because yeah. you're kind of wispy and secret. It's not, it's not, it's not quite one to one. Yeah. It's, it's almost. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, if I'm creating new characters, gotta I'm not going to make. So what am I going to create? Miss Martian? Who is a total character that is invented? <laughs> Bedlam, this like de facto genie, is actually an Atlantean offspring of the Atlantean god Gar Danuth. Gar Danard. Gar Danard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my god. And yes, Gar Danuth is a character who has been around for a long time. Ah, yeah, but so, of course. But I, listen, I can make fun of it all I want, but I'm the one who's on this couch constantly bitching about how they cre They go, I want to do a story, and it, I'm, I've written myself in a corner. New character! Right. So yeah. They're at least using something. Bedlam is an original character created for the story. He is connected to a character that was created before and a whole rich history of Atlantean culture. Thank you. Does yeah. this give him like underwater powers? No, it has nothing to do with underwater. He is He's just an magic. Atlantean god. He's well, he, Atlantis wasn't always underwater though. That's right? right. Yeah. So anyway, he's he's magic now and he possesses the little boy. Oh. Uh, 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 kind of. He's like an evil genie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well it's kind of like he infects him with his power. Yeah, but also he's there and he's like protecting him and using him because he can draw from the imagination of this child and that gives him power and it makes him stronger. And the more wishes he makes, like Bastion, like the more wishes he makes, like the stronger he becomes, the, right. more, the more control he gets over the world and stuff like that. Okay. So like, but Bedlam's end game is kind of unclear. It's just more like, He's, he's happy to be free. Matthew allows him to like express his power. And because what Matthew wants is a world without grown-ups, he then gets the world to himself. Okay. And, and Bedlam also taps into an unending power source of magic to accomplish his goal of creating a world without grown-ups. Because like, you need to have a lightning rod, so to speak, of power to generate that kind of change. Because it's not like, 
Because you could just tell a story where the grown-ups, poof, are out of existence and the world is just dominated by children. Mm -hmm. I assumed that's what this was. That's yeah. not what this and, is? No, it is. Oh, okay. But it has to be more complicated. It's got to have it, it can't a reason just be that. that, like, he sends all the grown-ups to purgatory, or they all go to the moon, or they all go to the nightmare dimension or something. Right. No. It's not that. It's not. What, what could it be? What then? could it be? Something you would probably not anticipate without some heavy thinking. <laughs> but, so all the children are missing. But... Or mi all the no, no, no. parents are missing. All the children are oh, missing. All the children and all the adults are like, oh. where are the children? And they're looking everywhere and they're freaking out. And Max Mercury is like spazzing. I was like, oh, I told him to like, do his homework. What's wrong with me? Maybe he left. I'm like, oh, you know what? Screw him. He hasn't figured it out yet. Uh -huh. The Justice League is on their orbiting satellite base. And they're trying to figure out like where all the children are. And they're using these like satellites and stuff to... Tra so to look for them and they can't find any. So the book is weird. You're like, wait, a world, well, I without, a world, without, a world without grown ups. A world without children. But I'm, I'm looking at a world of grown ups without children. Right. And so. Where's the world without grown ups? Yeah, well, we cut right to it after the Justice League scratch their chins and trying to figure out, like, yeah. what is this world without children? I can't believe, like, all the kids are gone. What right. happened to them? Meanwhile, on Earth, all the grown ups are missing and all the children are, like, having a blast. And Dezago does a nice job of articulating, like, at first, like the first couple of hours, most of the children were afraid and cried and stuff. But after the reality set in that the grown-ups aren't coming back, they go ape shit. It's like they, Home Alone. They freak out <laughs> like you do when the lights go out temporarily in a classroom. You just lose your mind. You know, kids are smoking and like <laughs> they're, they're realizing it's horrible. You know, good for them. Right. Uh, nice message. And uh, a couple of kids are like on the roof of the house. And they're like, come on, jump <laughs> with this what? umbrella. It'll, it'll parachute you. And he's like, no, I don't know. So he jumps and then Mary Marvel, a member of the Captain Marvel family, who is a child, mm -hmm. uh, she swoops in and saves him. Huh. And she's like, am I the only superhero here? Jesus. <laughs> and you see, there are, she isn't. There's a couple of superheroes there. This would be problematic. That are, that are children. You know, like Captain Marvel Jr. and Arrowette and like Wonder Girl and stuff. And they're all like springing to action. And we're giving you a little, little insight into the characters that probably will eventually show up on the Young Justice team. Right. That's cool. Meanwhile, a child sneaks onto Ferris Airspace launch pad, breaks into a jet, and begins to use it. Nope. What? <laughs> this is not like a video game where <laughs> like... He's just flying around. You just get it and you press the fly I know how to work and yeah. then you just Maybe he's fly. fully instrument rated for Microsoft's Flight Simulator. <laughs> So, oh, that's gonna be easier than I thought. You know, I don't yeah. know if like Down. fighter jets have like a key, <laughs> but I I well, have to. I hope they, they, they were probably way. in there. You know? Yeah, they, they left the, the keys in the ignition. Exactly. Of the jet, or they left them under the uh, under the visor. Well, right. we never have to worry about it because there's always security around. I guess oh. there, yeah, it could yeah. be that there uh, that there isn't a key. I don't know. You're right. So Superboy goes and saves the kid in the jet. Meanwhile, uh, you know, some kids free all the zoo animals in, like, the local zoo. <laughs> Once again, you need keys You're for free. that. My uncle used to work in the place like this, and he showed me how to do it. So now he knows. Also, if the doors were open, when the, you know, it's during operational hours, they don't just lock the door behind them every time they go into, like, a, you know, an instrument room. Okay. Anyway. So they let out even the, even the tigers? And oh, yeah, whatnot. of course. That just seems dangerous. Oh, all the animals get free. Yeah. So, you know, the, 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 the judge... The, 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 some poor kid is like, guys, I don't think we should do this. And they're like, ah, oh, shut up. You're just, you're just a cow. We're going to set loose the tiger. They yeah. won't eat us. Yeah. There's plenty of antelopes here for them to eat. They don't want to eat us. <laughs> no, it's true. So there's a kid that's like shooting up an arcade. It gets dark because with we're With a gun. Guns? Yeah, with oh, a real geez. gun. And Robin just hits him in the hand with a batarang and goes, go home. Oh. And then... Go home? Yeah. That's what you say to the kid who's shooting up an arcade? Well, what's he going to do? Wrap him up for the authorities? There are no authorities. He's yeah. the only one that's there. So Impulse puts the animals all back okay. in the zoo. And, uh, well, is Impulse super strong? No, but he's fast. How does so he, he pick can... up like a gorilla? Well, he doesn't pick it up. He just kind of directs him. Yeah, or, yeah exactly. <laughs> or runs into him like a thousand times a second until might... Okay, so my <laughs> assumption is he creates like force fields around them that like, you know, he creates like a whirlwind around them and oh. then pushes the whirlwind. I just assume like he moves the arm and then he grabs the leg and he moves that. Yeah, and he moves like, the other arm. <laughs> just make him run over there. Just moves each limb individually. According to the book. Him, like days in his time. Yes. He's like, he's got a beard. 
<laughs> in the book, he just picks it up and it's just very hard. Okay. He's like, Ugh, this is heavy. And it's like, yeah, no, it's a thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah, but we're only picking up like one pound at a you time. You weigh 90 pounds soaking wet. So Superboy mm. saves the kid from dying in a jet. Right. And uh, super, an impulse shows up and he's like, hey man, what's going on? Because he's just checking out things. Yeah. And when they meet up, Robin shows up on a, bo- on, a, on a motorcycle. Yeah. And he's like, hey. And they're like, Robin, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I used radar and I tracked the jet that was going rogue and followed it to here. So then he brings everyone to the Batcave to, you know, caucus. Right, right. We got a headquarters. Yeah. Let's go. The Batcave. So they go to the Batcave and uh, Robin's figuring out, like, if there are no adults, eventually the grid's going to shut down. Yes. <laughs> So yes. we, we, have, we have a finite amount of time to use computers and, and clean water because everything's going to shut down pretty soon. We've got to figure this out fast. Yeah, yeah, but like, you know, maybe that was already taken care of. Like, look, I want a world without grown-ups. Right. But I still want it to function. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, it's all automated. Your hypothesis, that's part of the wish, <laughs> was that I want a world without grown-ups, but everything will function as if there were grown-ups <laughs> running things. It's just that's, like... Uh, that would be a good, smart thing to do. Right. With I'll, a genie, you do have to be that specific. But this isn't a genie, it's an Atlantean god, so it just, it just inferred. Right. It, I don't, I don't recall if like levers pull on their own <laughs> and valves just regulate their own temperature gauges. Like I, I, I it doesn't factor. Right. What would be amazing if you replaced it all with delivering fuel? Atlantean <laughs> technology. Yeah. So right. So just like it does run on its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, we're, we're, everything's replaced. Yeah. The the uranium mines continue to operate oh, and transfer nuclear fuel to the plants. Of course. Tractors yeah. are still you know harvesting food. <laughs> yes, and delivering that food yeah. to plants to be. Processed. processed so that it can be edible. Anyway, Impulse notices that there's like a, a Robin costume under glass, and he's like, How could you keep one of your costumes in this glass case? He goes, Get the hell away from there! <laughs> Thanks, Eddie Valiant. Jesus. Yeah. So Robin is tracking like all these different like signals through the Batcave, and he finds that there's like a lone television broadcast coming in from Fawcett City. And it's What's being Fawcett made. Fawcett City? What? Uh, Fawcett City is one of the made up cities in the DC oh, universe. Who's, whose city is that? Captain Marvel's. Okay. And the young Ugh. person who's operating it. Oh, come on. Fawcett City? That's Because uh, it's from he's from Fawcett Comics before it was acquired by DC Comics. Oh. So they named his city after the, co- the publishing company. Fawcett it's, Comics? It's F A W, yeah. right? Not F A U? No, it's F A W. Good. Yeah. Oh, Fawcett is someone's name. Yeah. Okay. That makes sure. a lot more sense. But Billy Batson is giving the broadcast. Uh-huh. and. Robin knows who that is. I don't recall if Superboy does, but I know Impulse does not. And so he's like, huh. Okay, let's go. And Superboy and Robin... And Wait. Superboy and Impulse are like, who the hell is this little boy and why are we caring? Are you allowed to change into Shazam? Well, that's the question. Or will he disappear? Right? Because Shazam's an adult, but Billy isn't. So oh. the Justice League calls Bill Clinton on their voice monitoring system and... He's like, uh, go know. on, do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I know, I know where this is already. Oh, you do? Yeah, oh, you do? I mean, I don't know where they are. Billy Batson's going to transform to Shazam. He's gonna go Shazam's going to be world. in the adult world. And then that's how we're going to figure it out. Uh, kind of. Yeah? Kind of, yeah. Okay. So Batman is not on the watchtower. He's in the Batcave. Mm-hmm. But the train. But the kids Justice are in the back. Yeah, what? Yeah, I, there's two worlds clearly, or something. There are different times. It's two or, worlds. Yeah, yeah. It's just two worlds. Two worlds. It's, 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 it's just two worlds. It's just two worlds. <laughs> so Batman is uh, beginning a sequence on the back computer. He's like, I have a hunch. Meanwhile, we cut in on uh, Bedlam, aka Matt, because Bedlam is the entity, but since Matt is possessed, kind of by him, right? He's he's he, Bedlam now. He looks like Matt. Yeah. Yeah, but but Matt is having the time of his life. He's he's living it up in a world without grown-ups. He's got pizzas and hot and hamburgers and video and play, all the Playtendo he could ask for. <laughs> right, all the children who don't have a magical genie to give them free magical food are right. going to die, but he'll be fine. Well, no, it's interesting because as a result of Matt's actions and getting rid of the world without grown-ups, as a result of Matt's actions and getting rid of all the grown-ups. The imagination of the children starts to fuel Bedlam as well. And the more imagination that is used in Congress with Bedlam's powers, the stronger Bedlam becomes. What? 
And he's, it, it's he's, not because Bedlam's a child god or anything like that. It's, it's just because, like, since the kids are running wild, children. their imagination is getting even bigger. Yes, well, it has so to do with the... He is fueled by imagination. Yes. And children have the most imagination. Right. And when the grown-ups aren't around, uh, it's even ever, more. Unless you ever asked a child to tell you a story. <laughs> because Look, just because they have imagination doesn't mean they have, like, you know, so story structure. Yeah, yeah they, they don't understand, understand plot. plot yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> One time or consequence there was a, or narrative a chair coherence. that, like, oh my god. <laughs> Such imagination! <laughs> There's literally no reason no, why I, he's fueled by imagination. No, 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 well, uh, Just because is. it's a child and because of the power source that Bedlam is tapping. Which is? Oh, we'll get to that. Ah, well, well, okay, Bedlam that is, is the mystery. Chaos. It's a mystery, yeah. yeah. Mom and Dad could see him now. Mom and Dad, oh, I miss Mom and Dad. What's going on? <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, it's, it's Home Alone. It's Home Alone. He's, yeah. At first... He's like, what's happening? And then he's like, yes! And he's like, oh no. I miss my family. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but, but Bedlam, the entity, uses his power to kind of like push a little harder. And redirect that, him. Redirect yeah. him. Because he doesn't, he doesn't overwrite him or supplant him. He's just like letting his baser instincts guide what's going on. Right. <laughs> How dare you, sir? <laughs> oh, I knocked it earlier. So the Trinity makes their way to Fawcett City. They end up at the TV station. And Billy Batson's like, hey, it's Superboy, Robin and the Fl and, and Kid Flash? Is that who you are? He's like, no. I'm a new character. I'm called Impulse. I won't become Kid Flash until way later. Right. I'm a new character who readers already knew about. Right. But you didn't. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> so Robin takes Billy aside and he's like, okay, so like, what's going on? Because these two don't know that you're Captain Marvel, but right. I do. Right. I have files on you. <laughs> I can't call you Shazam yet. Right. No, because we haven't dropped that yet. So he goes, listen, you have magic powers that turn you into an adult who has the wisdom of Solomon. Maybe you should Shazam out. Yeah. Fix this problem. He goes, I'm afraid. Because if I transform, what if I'm blinked out of existence too? Right. Like, I don't know what will happen. And what if all the grown-ups are dead? Right. And Robin's what like, if well... Kills me? Yeah, and Robin's like, well... We don't really have a lot of options, and I really need you to nut up, buddy. <laughs> well, okay. What's your idea to save the world? Right. Let's let's, uh, let's give your idea a shot. Yeah, let's okay. hear it. You know, so, what? actually, let's let's, let's bring it. Let's open, everybody, the, let's everybody, open this up to everybody. everybody. Billy's got an idea that 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 he thinks is better than mine. What is let's it, Billy? It, Go ahead, Billy. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> what, Never mind. Was it was, was it nothing? Was it was it sit here and. Gradually starved like to really death. Really browbeating this kid. <laughs> that your that your master plan? <laughs> Who are we gonna Mickey? eat first, guys? Because <laughs> I've got the conk. <laughs> He's just like, dude. Does that make you mad? Do you want to hit me? Because I don't think you're strong enough, Billy. Not as you are. <laughs> <laughs> just goads him into being Captain Marvel. Oh no, he doesn't do that. No. Uh, but then. The national weather satellites start kicking into gear, because remember, they're at a TV station. And uh, they're noticing that there's a crazy weather anomaly going on over Happy Harbor, Rhode Island. Hmm. Happy Harbor? Yeah. And they're like, what? Only Robin has any idea what the hell that means, because Happy Harbor, Rhode Island has been the headquarters for the Justice League. Hmm. In fact, the Justice League had a headquarters, which was essentially just a big, crazy cave <laughs> that they then tried, when they abandoned it for an awesome orbiting satellite, uh, the U.S. government wanted to turn it into a place to dump nuclear waste, but the Doom Patrol convinced them to let them use it for a little while. <laughs> ah. But anyway, so there's a rich history of this subterranean cave that used to be the Justice League's headquarters. Okay. And, and perhaps it could be being used right now. Batman analyzes some stuff. I think he analyzes dust. I think that's the idea. Dust, okay. And he says that it's only 17 hours old, which right. means we're not really right. on Right, it was Earth. created by magic or whatever. Yeah, and it was only made like yesterday. Yeah. We were literally born yesterday. Well, well no. The Earth the was. The Earth was, yeah. and everything we're using. Yeah. Wait, let me carbon date you. <laughs> so then they're all kind of like, oh no, who's on Earth to protect it? And it's like, dude... No, nobody. Well, the children, but yeah. And yeah. then they start going like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, but because at the same time, it's like you can't have supervillains attack. They're adults. Yeah, yeah. 
But, well, but things will fall apart. Right. But, like, at least they're not dead. Right, yeah. This is good news. Yeah. As far as you knew, they were all just gone forever. I know. But it's yeah, great. some uh, Pied Piper went <laughs> off with them. Green Lantern's like, well, I mean, they got Robin. He knows what he's doing. And then Wally's like, oh, Christ. <laughs> and they have impulse. Oh, no. They're Curse you, Bart. It's over. <laughs> so the, He's a speedster. He could easily defeat all of them yeah. and rule the world. Yeah, but he's also a dumbass. Oh, yeah. So the, the kids are all hanging out in the TV station, and they're trying to figure out what their next move is. And they're like, well, I wonder if what's happening at Happy Harbor has anything to do with the JLA headquarters. And Impulse is like, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> let's go. And they're like, all right, Billy, let's go. And he goes, no, I can't go. I'm too afraid. And they're like, all right, chump, later. So then they go to Happy Harbor, and it is like a crazy wasteland of like... <sighs> caves and pits and volcanoes and it's a cool place to visit yeah it, it, it's altered Something's as a result happened. of magic okay uh meanwhile billy is crying about how lame he is uh, and then eventually he decides to like nut up or grow up. a pair right and so he's he he shouts he, he shazam does, yeah. he does the and the shazam. the device is fun because it ends with him saying shah right continues with him saying Zam. Right. And that's terrifying right there. Right. Like so he activates his power and he blinks into space between Earths because he is not transformed into Captain Marvel. Instead, he's because of the nature of the spell. Because or he said it slowly <laughs> or he said the two words kind of <laughs> separate. Right. So yeah. does it work if I go Sha? Zam. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he ended up outside of both Earths. And he gets to see, like, okay, so there's a fake Earth, and then there's my Earth, and I'll I'll go to the one that's made up. I'll see what the adults have to say about this. So he just, like, kind of floats over to Earth. Over there, yeah. So he can just choose between the two. Yeah. yeah he has to manually fly there. Yeah, like, he has to kind of And like it's, swim. like, in space? Yeah, like, if but I like were to you look can up see... from one, I'd see the other no. one in the sky? No, because, like, look at all these different Earths that are different colors. My when guess is that, like, we're seeing the multiverse. Okay, why are there stars? Um, because they're <laughs> planets. <laughs> because like, it's oh, still space. Other planets the, they're not actually stars. They look like stars. But so, like, actually, you got the two yeah. Earths here, and, like, these are the two Earths. I just assume, like... While they exist, they can't see each other. Right. Yeah. They can't. They're in. Yeah. He's, at, he's They're in, different planes. He's not in space. He's in like. Yeah. The he's space between, between dimensions. Universes. He's in a dimension. Yeah, because if you recall, there was that moment in uh, DC versus Marvel when Cap and Batman are brought to see the universal entities of DC and Marvel fighting each other, and they're like, "Is this really happening?" Yeah. And Axis Where are like, we? Are we and Axis is like, of them? It would break your brain. <laughs> You're seeing crazy shit that is less crazy than the real shit that's actually happening. Right. So, he lands. Meanwhile, Robin and Impulse I, and I, Superboy. I'm, are, sorry, I'm just wondering at what point does, where does it, when he, is there an invisible line that he crosses it and then he sees the sun and Mars and all the stuff that's in I our would world? assume, yeah. Where, 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 Once right? he breaks Atmo, it's like he passes through. Yeah, there's yeah. like an invisible barrier line and mm -hmm. then just whoa oh I'm now I'm in the real I, yes. space. We don't we see him in the dimensional like rift. Right. And then we see him on Earth. Right. That's it. Okay. Because it would be complicated to depict. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so long story short, uh the whole area has been transformed into a level from a Playtendo game. And uh, the game... Is that a wish? He wished for that? No, it's more like he created it subconsciously to protect himself from the Young Justice team, you know, stopping him. That he didn't him. know was looking for him. Yeah. Well, but Bedlam does. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, the video game is called Nazi Dinosaurs from Venus. So obviously a Nazi dinosaur comes to attack them. Um, the, 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 the Trinity is actually like dangling over like a, like a bottomless pit and, and nobody can do anything. The, the Trinity is kind of like dangling from like this tree that's grabbed onto Superboy. Yeah. And Robin can't get any leverage and the impulse is useless when he's just suspended. Right. So Robin throws a Batarang grapple line around the uh, Nazi dinosaurs. That, that's an aura ring. Thank you. It's a Robin ring. It is. It's a Rarang. Rubberang. <laughs> and uh, he, he wraps it around the uvula of uh. the Nazi dinosaur. Yeah. Don't feel Which... bad for him. He's a Nazi. <laughs> and so... You know, he snaps he's just a his... wild animal wearing a Nazi jacket. He doesn't know what he's wearing. He's a video game character. It's not even real. So he snaps Yeah, but one back. arm is always a little bit higher. Well, naturally. So 
They, uh, they oh, it snaps its neck. I was going to say it just makes it throw Ooh. up. Because, yeah. like, you wrap it around its uvula. I know, right? Gag reflex right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they're covered in dino vomit. So he pulls them back, and then they punch it, and then they find that there's, like, an area that leads them into Bedlam. It's just, like, a whole, you know, like, yeah. fun house time. There's of a situation. goddamn Captain Carrot reference. Yeah, why not? <laughs> sure. Matthew, reali- like, he realizes he subconsciously created like a level from a video game. Mm. And it reminded him that all he wanted for his birthday was the Playtendo. And then his brain is, you know, the Bedlam part of him is like, no, I have no time for video games. And he's like, but this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> like, I yeah. wanted a world that I've grown up so I can have fun. I'm, I'm like running at things. Like, right. That, that's not fun. Not, why would I do that? And then, you know, the Bedlam entity is like, no, no, no. Like, once you defeat those three, then you can, then you can yeah. take a break and play. Then you'll have the most fun you've ever had. Right. They're, gonna, they're trying to stop Why would you want to play video games on a console when you can play video games in real life? I, he doesn't even bother. It's just like, <laughs> just, just let's kick the can down the road. So, the you know, the, 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 the league is still, still just standing around, standing talking. around looking like morons. Yep. Billy appears and uh, nobody knows who Billy Batson is except for like Superman and the, like, the classic members of the Justice League. He doesn't show up as Captain Marvel? No, no he can't. He can't, he can't, into he can't turn Captain into Marvel. Captain Marvel. All he can do is... And Superman is like, hey, Billy. Where is Captain Marvel? And he's like, I don't know. But don't worry, Robin, Superboy, and Impulse are on the case. And they're like, oh shit, we better hurry up our timetable. And he goes, listen, when I was outside of the Earths, I noticed that there was some shit going on outside of Happy Harbor, Rhode Island. This weird purple swirly thing. Yeah. And they're like, Happy Harbor, Rhode Island, we better spring into action. Okay. So, you know, the... the, 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 the Happy kids... Harbor's the key to all of it. Yes. Yeah. And Robin makes a reference to the fact that, like, the Just League headquarters looks like a twisted Tim Burton cartoon. Hmm. And then Impulse says cartoon, and then suddenly the Justice League runs by, and they are Looney Tunes versions of the Justice League. That's fun. What's really funny is how not representative of each other's characters they are. Like, Superman is a cat, and Batman is a rabbit. And Aquaman is a frog, but Catwoman still gets to be a cat. <laughs> and like Flash uh, is a bear. And it's like, what? what? Wonder Woman's the road runner. Right. Not the Flash. What? Impulse realizes that he imagined that. Oh. And it, and it came true. So all their imaginations. And are... so Robin's like, so Bedlam is, read, is able to read our thoughts and make them manifest. Empty your heads. Because if we picture J. Edgar Hoover, <laughs> J. Edgar Hoover will appear and destroy us. And Super- Superboy is like, great. So that means if we imagine our greatest villains or fears, and then they all poof in yeah. different places. Yeah. And Superboy is fighting Metallo. And Metallo's like, oh, you you could beat me because I had a kryptonite heart, but what if I was all kryptonite and a Terminator? And they fight literally like in the Terminator steel factory. Oh, that's cool. So... Well, this will be easy. I'll just knock you in. Right. So, <laughs> Oh, I know exactly how to beat you. So Superboy fights... Kryptonite Metallo. Impulse fights Kid Grodd. Like a kid version. Because they all have to be children. Yeah. So, Gorilla Grodd is a, like, junior ape. And he's like, well, you're a little guy. I can get you. And he goes, well, I can get big. And so he becomes huge. And Impulse runs away. And then Robin gets transported into Silence of the Lambs, where, like, a junior Joker is. Uh... And junior Joker just, like, dresses him down, where he's like, you're not Batman. You're the worst Robin. So I'm going to imagine a portal right here, and he reaches out for Superboy, and the portal appears next to Superboy, and he goes, tag me. And then the two of them switch places, and so Robin fights Kryptonite Metallo, and... Ah, how does he know that Superboy needs help with whatever he's doing? He just... He just gets lucky. He just infers, yeah. yeah. He just assumes. Well, it's the idea that, like, everyone has to fight their worst yeah, villain, so if we but... Fight- if we fight each other's, each other's worst villains, we're not matter. weak to them. Yeah. yeah. So then Superboy creates a portal and switches with Impulse, and he just punches the gorilla. And Impulse switches with Robin, and he <laughs> just bugs the Joker into submission. Okay. Just asks why for every qu- for everything he says. <laughs> and then uh, they all leave their respective fears. Right. Uh, meanwhile, the Justice League springs into action, and they go to their version of Happy Harbor. Mm -hmm. And what do they get? A purple cave. And when they get to the cave, the ground reaches up after them and tries to prevent prevent them from going in. Hmm. The team goes to the cave, and they get into 
there and they find like the trophy room that was left over mm -hmm. by the Justice League, which includes like their old crest. And for a second, Impulse is slowed down because he sees like an image of the original Justice League or Justice League from that time. And he sees like Barry Allen on the Flash and he kind of like gets to idolize his grandfather for a second. Mm. And it's like, oh, that's nice. He's got like, mm. he's got like a little bit of, you know, respect. So the League breaks free of the defenses of the magic cave. Right. And when they get there, they see that Captain Marvel is trapped in the cave and surrounded by purple energy and he is the lightning rod and the limitless amount of magic that Bedlam is drawing from to be able to create two different, to create one other different world and generate anything from the thought of a 13 year old boy. That's weird. Oh, so he got like split from... From Billy. Billy. And then they, he just kind of put Captain Marvel in stasis and draws from his power. How did he get him? How does Captain Marvel somehow translate to an Atlantean god? He oh, just it's all magic. It. Yeah. Uh, he knows how to use magic, I guess, because he... Yeah. Yeah. He probably... Well, Shazam came, got his powers from the wizard, and the wizard's been around for a while, so... Maybe the... Uh, the gods that created him, and he and they knew each other? Yeah. Yeah, so... They were contemporaries. Right? Solomon and Solomon. Zeus, and where does Bedlam fit into that? Well, I, I think the idea well, here is that Bedlam is actually... He, because Bedlam is aware of Captain Marvel, he knows that he can use it, because the idea here is that, like, Captain Marvel, you know, Shazam stands for shit, and <laughs> one of the things is the, is the wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And... So because Captain Marvel has like limitless magical potential energy and the wisdom of Solomon to execute it such that you can create a perfect facsimile of Earth with working components and shit, that's why he chose Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's because it's a magical explanation for why everything works the way it does. Mm. Because Captain Marvel is technically wise enough to anticipate... The, the, the trappings of a complicated execution like what Bedlam is trying to accomplish. Right. He needs both the magic and the... And the wisdom. And the wisdom to pull off such a, such a complex... Maneuver. Feat. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and so they're like, okay, well, we'll just wake so, him up. And so it's not Bedlam's magic that's doing this. Well, Bedlam's yeah. magic started it, but it's Captain Marvel's magic that allows for this much... Shit to occur to be right. fueled. Yes. Okay. And Plastic doesn't Man's really like, have limitless potential, right. in, Inherent within himself. No. Right. Otherwise, he'd be way OP. And why do we create a character like that? Right. Uh, <laughs> but Plastic Man's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! If we wake him up, we're on the fake Earth. If he is suddenly pulled from the battery, will we? Will the Earth we're on disappear? Right. Where will we go? So. Yeah, we have to. We have to get back to the other earth and that's when billy batson yeah. goes i'm gonna tell you an important lesson that was taught to me nut up or shut up that's right so let's do you have a better up. idea <laughs> right oh well, let's hear it so uh you just got robin <laughs> it's really mean batman's like nice <laughs> so uh they face against like the kid bedlam yeah and he's like got a cool suit and he can like wield power and he attacks them and in point of fact, Bedlam taps into each of their collective minds. It can't just be Robin. Yeah, right, be right. So Bedlam taps into each of their minds and anticipates what each of their ideas for weaknesses in each other is. And then makes them happen. So Your true weaknesses were your teammates. Right. No, <laughs> and that would be sad and dark if it was like, <laughs> I'm facing against myself. Uh, but, you know, Superboy's idea, or Robin's idea for Superboy is like a kryptonite Gundam and... Right. Superboy's idea for beating Impulse is like a thing to keep him from moving, like a like a, you know, like a, like a medieval torture device. Oh, and, yeah, wreck. Uh, yeah, and Impulse's idea for how to defeat Robin is a badass ninja. What? What? Yeah, because Robin's like a ninja, so like a better ninja. Yeah, and Robin's like a better ninja. <laughs> That's Impulse's idea for my weakness. <laughs> really, the Impulse? Crappiest. He goes, "Holy crap!" Like I. It, Hey, everybody, clear your thoughts, and our manifestations of our fears will go away. Right. And they start to go away, but Impulse can't clear his mind. <sighs> so, like, all this shit starts popping up. Oh, jeez. Like, evil killer clowns and Nazi dinosaurs and crap. 
And Robin turns to Superboy and he's like, this, you know, Impulse does know he's supposed to be on our side, right? <laughs> it's like, ah! <laughs> but I have bad impulse control! <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. So so if Batman had been, in, had been there, mm-hmm. Matt could have just looked into his mind and found all the ways. And would defeat all of them immediately, yeah. yes. Right. So uh, <laughs> Batman shows up in the Happy Harbor cave with the League and he's like, I've got it. We'll link our minds with Martian Manhunter and we will use his telepathy with Captain Marvel's influence on the dream we're all technically in and we will merge the two separate realities together using our sheer force of will. Just by believing it will happen, it, it should happen. Uh. And they're like, are you serious? <laughs> that sounds like bullshit, man. Yeah, that and, sounds like a Superman plan. And Batman's like, do you have a better idea? That sounds like, a, sounds like you got that idea from a comic book oh, or something. Do you have a better idea? Plastic Man has an idea he'd like to share with the group, everybody. <laughs> Let's hear it, Plas. Oh my god. Robin really did learn that from you. Yes, I'm right. <laughs> well, so. well, friggin' Billy Batson came from, like, the sky or whatever. How about we just get in spaceships and, like, fly up there and see if we could just... <laughs> well, they were already in space and they couldn't... They, they, yeah, they couldn't see true. the other Earth. Yeah, that's because so, they were in the Watchtower in orbit. Yeah, they need yes. to get out of orbit. Out of orbit. Yeah. 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 Keep bit, going they further. Just, just a little higher. Yeah, I just guess. Just a little higher. So anyway, the 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 Young Justice team is getting their asses kicked by impulses, impulses. Yeah, and he's like, ah, they're all gonna die. It's all my fault. And he yeah. remembers Max Mercury's lesson of like slowing down. Slow down. And just so he's down. like, wait a minute, I oh, I can't slow down because I'm such a jackass. But Bedlam is a 13-year-old who's modeling everything after a video game. This whole thing is essentially a video game. Uh-huh. So then he for he imagines that Bedlam resets the game. So it all goes back to square one and they're back in the cave the way it was. <laughs> and Bedlam's like <laughs> back on the menu. big deal, I'll just come up with a new thing. And then and, and Impulse goes, reset. And he's like, no, I'll just reset. And he's like, wait, just reset. No, you reset. <laughs> See, I'll do this all day because I am an impulsive jackass. And he just annoys the shit out of Bedlam and just keeps resetting him. And the more he resets him, the more frustrated and disconnected Matthew comes from Bedlam and he starts to like fall apart. And Robin then reaches in to the little boy and he's like, you must be really tired from using all that power. Like you should just take a nap. And as Bedlam starts to wane and Matthew starts to sleep and the Justice League's magical wish-granting kumbaya moment starts to happen, everything starts fading back into itself until Bedlam's asleep and defeated. It should just be the fact that Bedlam falls asleep. Yeah. Right. And Matt does. And well, that brings the Justice League back. otherwise you need like this weird coincidence where the Justice League just happens to also be doing the thing that they need to do right. for it to work. Well, so that's... is it working? Like, does the... So... Right. So I guess that's really a question. Like, I think the answer is Batman was wrong. The Young Justice figured it out and solved it. But the League thinks they solved it. Right. Yeah. It's like when Lewis Tully shoots the slime molded museum with the proton pack. He's like, I did it! And he and everyone around him thinks that he saved the day, but really the Ghostbusters saved the day. In a way less satisfying adventure inside. (laughs) Okay. So the League's like, you're welcome everybody! Batman secretly knows. Yeah, Batman does know. He's like, that did not work. Nope. So That was a bad plan. Because Bedlam is like, attached to Matthew, the you know, the extra normal affairs department shows up and like puts him in a stasis chamber oh. and just carts him off so his life's over. Well, we're going to put uh, him in a medically induced coma for yeah. the rest of his life. Basically, that's what they do. And so the League is well, like, he Woo! was a little shit, so. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah. So the League and everyone around them is like glad handing and like high, high fiving. Yep. And Batman's like, we did it. Way to go. All right, Robin, let's go. <laughs> and they're all like celebrating and Batman's like, well, they're all celebrating. Time for me to leave. And you too, Robin. They start to go. And Superboy's like, Robin, where are you going? And he's like, I, I gotta go. I got I... So they go further out into the cave, and then Batman stops him, and he goes, you and your team did a great job. I'll see you back in Gotham. And then he leaves, and Robin's like, oh, my dad says it's okay for me to hang out, you guys. <laughs> and so they all, like, celebrate and have a great time. Yay. And thus, Young Justice was born. Right. They don't talk about forming Young Justice. No, Batman just book. says, like, you're, you're a team. You can go ahead and keep doing this. You have my approval. You earned the right. Yeah. So that was just World Without Grown Ups. Yep. So you forgot the cliffhanger dun dun dun. Red Tornado might be involved. 
Oh, so are we going to do Young Justice? We did it. It's, oh, okay. We're, we're, we're not going. doing this book. No, I explained who Young Justice was, and I gave you their first adventure. Okay. <laughs> this yeah, is just an JLA World Without Grown Ups. That's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JLA World Without Grown Ups. That's when they first appeared. And we, then they launched their title, Young Justice, which you can get in the description below this video. I'm going to give this one. It's a really, really terrific, comprehensive collection. Yep. It's not the whole collection, but it's still sure. a pretty comprehensive one. But then you it's also get, like, one. a lot more characters. Yes. Then you're introduced. There's actually a chapter called The One Before All the Girls Show Up. That's literally the name of the of the title. Uh -huh. What is it called? Boys Club? Well, no. I, the, no, like I said, <laughs> it's literally called The One Before All the Girls Show Up. That's the, the team is a sausage fest until they're like, oh, wait. And David wants to introduce them, but he wants to do it narratively speaking. He's like, I want to introduce those characters without just them all being... It's not like all the girl teenage superhero characters were having a spa day and it got attacked by Metallo. Right. And Young Justice swooped in and they're like, hey, you're here, let's join up. Like, it's actually a story. Oh, that story we just did is the beginning of this. Yeah. Oh, I did not realize. Okay. Yeah, they weaved That's in smart. It. So yeah. intrinsic is JLA World Without Grown Ups to the Young Justice mythos. It's just part of it. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. I, I, I dig it a lot. Uh, and, I, and I think you will too. If you're like, I, I know so many people who are hungry for like teenage superheroes mm -hmm. and like for like youthful stories. Right. Well, you already had them. You had them 20 years ago. You had years them 20 ago. years ago. Yeah. Well, but you're a teenager now. You didn't see this. You haven't go, seen it. Go check you. it out. That and I got to recommend Static. It's from Milestone slash DC, but Static is another incredible teenage superhero story. And we'll get to that story one day soon hopefully but uh static i think eventually they wanted him on young justice but because of the rights situation they never really got there mm. hmm. he ended up in the dc universe proper but again money right that title the one where the girl or before the girls show up yeah i i feel like that's a friend's reference because that's what all their episodes were called were the called, one the where one where whatever young justice Buy it. Check it out. It's in the description. I'll see you guys next week with an all new episode. So will they. Bye, everybody. <laughs> no, I don't know why saying, I ended it like that. I don't know. Man. I'll see you next week. Who knows about Bye. these chuckleheads? Bye forever. <laughs> That's the end. That's how we ended it. Now now let's come up with fun names for all these characters. We got Super... Super Cat? Super Dog? Super, super Dog? What, is, what is he? I don't know because Nightwing is definitely a dog. Yes. So Dogwing? Uh, Teddy Flash? Flashy Bear? Flashy Bear sounds wrong. I like Duckstroke the Terminator. <laughs> ba Rab Batman? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rab Batman is the best one you've that's got. That's pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Aqua Frog? <gasps> Who is this? Aqua Frog makes sense. That is Black Canary. So. Okay, it's a bird. Duck Canary? Yeah. No. Black Mallard? Black Duck. Black Mallard. Black Mallard. Martian worm hunter? <laughs> is it a snake? No, he I is can't a worm. It's straight up a worm. Martian worm. <laughs> worm man hunter. Yeah, worm shin. Worm shin. <laughs> Human hunter. What? Okay. It, miss, it's no, like. No, maybe because it's like. Uh, Mr. Mind is the villainous worm creature from Shazam. Oh. So maybe it's Mr. Manhunter? Is that oh, supposed to be a go. monkey? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I can't tell what the Green Lantern is. Yeah. It's like it's like the weird front beak of a uh, mouser. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean they're they 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 seem to be specific characters. Like that dog isn't just a dog. That's like it's like underdog. Right. But they're not. Yeah, they're cl I mean, the Roadrunner is clearly a Roadrunner. Yeah, and Batman is clearly Bugs Bunny. Yeah, but but some of them, I can't, I don't know. Maybe they're lesser known. I, I think it's just like, no, make them look like you in Looney Tunes. Super Chick? Oh, yeah, well, who's that? That's Superboy. That's Superboy. Why is Superboy in there? I don't know, but you've got Nightwing too, so. Well, Nightwing. But Nightwing's not no, part of the. a grown up. You know, like, we're talking about no one has an analog. There's no Robin or Impulse in here. Yeah. They're all it's weird. Grown ups. Who, what? It's really weird. Anyway, it's just one panel. So, <laughs> so let's not worry. So let's not worry too, too much, much about, about it. it.